Bible said, Luke chapter 17, verses 11, verse 11 to verse 19. Don't forget to give God thanks. Uh, once again, we are, uh, we have come to a festive time of the year. A celebratory and exciting time for many in North America and Western Europe. It's a time that they call Thanksgiving. And as Sister Gina rightly alluded to, I don't get involved in uh, too much and get too entrenched in the hype of these festivities because somewhere along the line these festivities whether by inception or by infiltration there is another god another spirit that is behind it as becoming Canadians, uh, we in contemporary times have viewed and have taken advantage of this time as an opportunity to throw off our work suits, take off our work hats, and to put on a t-shirt and jean skirt or jeans pants, and to go for a walk in the cool autumn breeze, and to enjoy ourselves with family and uh, have Thanksgiving turkey. I don't know where the turkey came from, but it manifested. <laughs> and uh, you'll understand as I go that the turkey had nothing to do with it originally, but they have the turkey and uh, there are times when we frequent, uh, this time of year, we frequent churches. Um, and it's still partially what people in the world do. They frequent churches, but... It's more or less a time and we've become so contemporary that it's a time when it's just, you know, you ask them, what are you going to do? I'm just going to relax. And everyone's about relaxing. But this wasn't always the case. This wasn't always the philosophy behind this festive celebratory time called Thanksgiving. In the early uh, adoption of the Western European Thanksgiving, uh, which was the celebration of, uh, or celebrating or thanking uh, the God or the Christian God for a hopeful and a bountiful harvest. The purpose of this great uh, festivity was to celebrate the equinox, the autumn equinox, or uh, again, the harvest time. It was a time when... Uh, Eastern Europeans were getting happy because it was the autumn. It was harvest time. Harvest was here. Uh, amen to God. And they were happy. And so they threw a great celebration. And uh, this celebration was uh, a wide celebration in Europe. Everyone was excited. This was the time of year when, uh, amen to God, it was happy and everybody was happy and you know the Europeans came over to the Americans and they uh, the Americas and they brought this great festivity over to the Americas amen to God and uh, we're said they celebrated this and America chose its own date and Canada chose its own date and it was all an excitement and thanking the Christian God for amen it was harvest time and and to those people the harvest was very important for without the harvest you were done for the year for there would be no food for the rest of the year especially in Europe and Western Europe and the, and the Americas if you didn't get food how would you survive it, it wasn't a microwave age it wasn't a time when you could do quick little generic things to get some food you needed the harvest but this thanksgiving that we are getting excited about it's uh, nothing more than an appropriation of pagan or celtic celebration of herfest it's a god called herfest uh, herfest derived from the word harvest the god of harvest it was a 
paganistic worship. It was to the, a certain God. And so all it is is an appropriation of this paganistic Celtic worship. And so that's why you have to be careful uh, how we get excited for all these uh, wonderful things that we are calling Thanksgiving. Now, not that I don't jump and take off my work suit and lay down and enjoy myself. I do, but I'm not going to get into the festivity of it because there's a spirit behind it. And even though it has changed in contemporary times, it still carries the same spirit. Come on, talk to me. But let me declare to you this morning that Jesus is not looking for this type of thanksgiving. Come on, talk to me. He's not looking for a herfest, celebratory, carnal type of thanksgiving. Hallelujah to God. Help me, help me, Lord. Carnal people will always be thankful for carnal things. Carnal people were happy for the autumn, the equinox, harvest time, for they were carnal. All they thought about was their belly. Oh, Jesus. But my Bible tells me that in Romans 8, 6. For to be carnally minded is dead. And to be spiritually minded is what? Life and peace. Oh, my God. If I am carnal, it's dead. For even if I'm celebrating Thanksgiving and I'm waiting for perishable things to come to fruition, if I eat it, I'm still going to die. You with me? If I eat the harvest, it's only good for a while because when I eat it, it comes out of the drought. I have to go to the bathroom to get rid of it. Yeah? Yeah? It's only a temporal thing. But when I have spiritual things, when I get spiritual food from God, when I'm thankful for spiritual things, the spiritual thing that I get from God gives me life. Not only life, but it gives me eternal life. And it gives me peace. A peace that passes all understanding. Oh, somebody give Jesus praise. I'm not getting getting excited for Thanksgiving, October 10th or whatever. But I'm getting excited for, I got a harvest that's coming. I got a reaping that's coming. Pour out thy sickle and reap the church. Oh my God. Galatians 6, 8 tells me, For he that soweth to this flesh shall of the flesh reap corruption. But he that soweth of the spirit shall of the spirit reap life everlasting. Are you with me? We're talking about harvest time. (laughs) Hallelujah to God. We're talking about thanksgiving. If I sow carnality... If I sow superficial, carnal, temporal things, I'm going to reap superficial, carnal, temporal things, and I'm going to inherit corruption, which is death. For I don't care how wealthy I am. I don't care how well fed I am. I'm still going to die the physical death. But I'm here to tell you that if I sow and reap spiritual things, you might kill the body, but you can't kill my spirit. Oh, hallelujah to God. I'm going to have eternal life. My God, I'm here to tell you, lip service, thanksgiving, isn't being thankful at all. Huh? For many times we come to the house of God and all we're doing is saying, I thank the Lord. We have taken this time of year to say, oh, I'm thanking the Christian God. For he went from the pagan God, Herfes, to now the Christian God to say thank you. And so many people just kind of go to the church and say, well, today it's, 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 it's Thanksgiving. So I'm going to give God thanks. But lip service is not giving thanks at all. Oh, somebody help me. Hallelujah. For all you're doing is working your lip. You're trying to deceive God. You're a witch.